Yeah, and we'll see uh, some some awesome stuff, of course, coming out from these next two teams as we get into the second best of five of today, of course, Virginia Wesleyan University versus Milligan University, both pushing for positive records as we saw in the you know head to head graphic earlier. Virginia Wesleyan at two and three, Milligan University at two and two, both trying to get back on track, trying to get back towards those positive records, trying to shoot for playoffs, of course, is that's always the ideal spot to be in, and they want to. It all's got to start now, you know, middle of the season. You got to be able to get that win streak to start. And that's exactly what we'll be seeing out of these two teams in this game. And excited to see a, a brawl, I would say, between these two teams as they start to get ready for the match. And you know, going into this one, as we look at the rosters set up, I'm very, you know, interested. I haven't seen either one of these two teams perform just yet. So I'm excited to see how they look and, you know, see if they can improve on their records. Yeah, and both these teams benefiting from a bye week, which does count as a dub towards their records. Right. Uh, and then Milligan, other win came off of a forfeit. So actually between all four wins, only one of those was actually uh, truly earned on the pitch. Uh, that one from Virginia Western University, and that one came last week versus the ECPI Rams. That was a 3-0, so a, a convincing win. Uh, and let's see if they can keep that momentum going. You know, This is going to be a good kind of middle-of-the-pack battle and could propel our teams into the back half of the season with some momentum yeah like you mentioned it's it's important because obviously both them coming from bye week wins you know being at one win total they need to try and figure out something to work with this time around and that's going to be the case as they get ready for this first game of this best of five and we'll see you know what kind of style a lot of teams are starting to develop their styles for 3v3 and for rocket league in general some teams like to go very aggressive on demos and they'll like to create plays based on demolitions and bumps and just trying to open up the space basically in the in the other side of the field meanwhile we saw something like we saw from rit that game in which we saw a lot of more team play trying to focus on getting the ball to each other not trying to go for as many solo plays and you know having less shots as sebward said they were more quality still though even though they had less shots they still had the, the good chances so and it's the first time I've seen either of these two on stream myself as well. So we're kind of learning about these players together. Uh, and I'm really curious what they bring to the table. Uh, and, I, and I'm anxious to get into this one. I mean, it's... Uh, you got two storied schools that uh, aren't very far apart, at least geographically. Now, uh, we're about to get up close and personal and head-to-head -head here on the pitch. We can start answering some of these questions that we pose to you. Right now, it's early aggression coming out of... Virginia Wesleyan. Up yeah, close well, shot. Bayless able to send that one away, but Blood's going to keep the pressure on. Yeah, Jalen's still there and still, like you said, just a lot of pressure out of Virginia Wesleyan so far. And that's exactly what they need to do. And they're taking the, the corner boost as well, which is another important thing we talked about in the last series, trying to starve the enemy team. Almost works out for Blood here in the first shot for him in this game. But right now, it's still the pressure in the favor for Milligan. University as they went on backwards, but Virginia West Lane has not stopped putting on that pressure since the start of this game. You know, and I like the aggression. The question now is, can they rotate back when it Ooh. quickly goes the other way? Ooh, Blood with a dangerous touch. Almost gets an own goal on that one. Not quite able to get it out of the zone just yet. Do you manage to pick up the boost? So perhaps they could just try to wait out this attack. Jalen finally able to get a decent touch in and the challenge to force it across the line. Coming a battle of possession midfield. Mine has a shot here. Blood able to get up high enough to find the touch. Get it out of there. Yeah, and we'll see what it's going to look like as Knight tries to bring this one off the backboard. And now, not a duck. Quick with the challenge. We're seeing still, like I'd mentioned, the pressure is consistently there from Virginia West Lane. And while there has not been a goal just yet, I think MU are lucky to have avoided that in this case with how much pressure we've seen from the other side. Nice bump from Jalen there, able to get this to the other side of the field. And Blood with a great challenge with the ZSR Octane going upfield here, trying to create some pressure for his team, but straight up to the other way now. Not a duck comes from Demo trying to stop this. Blood's going to be there for the immediate save. But two minutes gone with no goals, a much different pace than what we saw in the last series. Yeah, very much so. Uh, it, you know, teams are just going to play it a little conservative. Uh, you know, in game one, feeling each other out a little bit. Right. I mean, that's that's not atypical. Couple of missed opportunities here on the attack from Milligan. Gonna put another one way up high. Challenge the backboard defense. Blood misses it, but the shot follow-up misses. 
Oh, the rebound goes through, though. Bailey's able to get just enough of it to break the stalemate. Put our first goal on the board. And impressive from the likes of Milligan University, especially being down the entirety of the first half, I would say, to be able to come back and get that first goal in their favor. Definitely something impressive for this team. And it doesn't matter because the lead is gone immediately as Virginia Wesley and score off kickoff. That was a straight shot, too. Manages to thread the needle. It shows the importance of kickoff. You, you have a fast Absolutely. kickoff. You have a good chance at scoring goals. A lot of teams like to, to play around that. Sometimes they do have a much faster kickoff. Knight, especially, you can see that just going straight to the kickoff there. Had much better speed. And with that much better speed, could lead to much better shots. And in this case, for which Virginia Wesleyan, that's exactly in their favor. Two goals in, what, 15 seconds out of two kickoffs? Very impressive comeback so far from Virginia West Lane after being stuck, I would say, for that first two minutes and 30 seconds of just opening up the pitch now, immediately off kickoff twice. I mean, that's how you answer back. Oh, my goodness. Virginia West Lane coming back with a vengeance. And suddenly the Marlins are on top. A little fight in the corner. It's nice to put it off the backboard. Tie and oh. goal from Bayless. Off the pit, off the post. Oh, I don't believe it. I don't think Milligan University can believe that one either. Oh, it was such a wide open shot. I had to just try to get around the defender and put it a little too far wide. A heartbreaker. Another chance here as Milligan trying to go in on the attack, but they're just going to go ahead and abandon that one, grab some boost, and rotate back to defense. Knight's able to find a good challenge, but loses control in the air. And we're seeing that this play is starting to be created once again back from Milligan University, trying to keep the pressure over. On to Virginia West Lane's side of the field. Knight getting a nice touch off the backboard. They do have to be careful, though. Nobody is back at the moment for Milligan University. Jitra just trying to challenge at midfield to be able to get his teammates at that time to rotate back and get some boost in. A miss from Blood. Knight gets the tap off the backboard, but somehow still doesn't lead to anything for Milligan University. And they're going to have to fall back on this point, giving the ball over to Jalen and trying to just play defense for a little bit here as they recover and get some boost and fall back. And not even really grabbing a whole lot of boost. Right. This is important. Bayless has got to create some room, let the team have a moment to breathe and find some resources. Bayless not able to get up high enough and suddenly on the back foot, Milligan University running down, scrambling. Jitra is able oh, to find no. this save. Jalen kind of got in front of the, uh, what they might have been their own attack there. It was an odd angle. Yeah, trying to pass to Blood, it looked like, was the play, but Blood was already pre jumped and the pass went too far, which meant that all three players from Virginia West Lane were committed on offense. So if that went the other way, this is a different story, but it's still fine for right now. Blood gets it on Ooh. goal, but Jiro with a great save and off the crossbar, off the post, oh, no. and back in still as not a duck finds. The ninth shot in this drive, essentially, to be able to get this one to go in. Jalen, unfortunately, gets that one off the post, but good positioning from Not a Duck. And obviously, a lot of panic from the, the back of Milligan is they just had to get out of that situation. Not an easy way to do so. Oh, they had it within their grasp. It was so close. And then, yeah, scrambling in desperation there on the back end as uh, they can feel the inevitable goal coming. It took a while, but Virginia Wesley had stuck with the play. They stuck with this game one. And that definitely seems like the nail in the coffin. A little miss there might have been mathematically possible if that had gone in. But alas, the ball will not bounce in Milligan's favor here in game one. It's going to be a 1-0 lead going over to the Marlins. Okay, Knight. Oh, okay, Knight almost, okay. almost putting on the pressure at the end. Obviously, it would have still been a win. Nonetheless, to the Marlins, to Virginia, Virginia Wesleyan. But, you know, Knight showing off a little bit there at the end with some nice little dribbling. Shows that, you know, maybe they still have a, a chance to come alive into the next game as we see what happens going into game number two. But overall, a very, very strong game from Virginia Wesleyan. We already kind of talked about that. 12 shots in general for them against the seven from MU. So this is finally the outlier or... or I guess the entire last series was probably the outlier. This is finally the real Rocky League, where the team with the most shots probably is winning in this case. And uh, they do end up winning that game 3-1. We just saw it was a bunch of pressure uh, that entire time for Virginia West Lane, especially in that first half of the game. It, it was really difficult for MU to find a way back from that one. And MU did start the business. They had the first goal 
But, yeah. you know, two goals off of kickoffs in 20 seconds is really rough to come back from. Yeah, unfortunately, they went three unanswered the other way in Virginia Wesleyan's favor. Uh, so despite Bayless getting that opening goal in the end, it, uh, they can't really put anything on top of it. They can't, they can't build on that. And now the momentum is going against them as we head into game number two. Sure, while getting in there quick this time. No losing faceoffs right out of the gate or kickoffs, rather. Oh, but look at this. I mean, just they lose control of it. Not a duck comes in. And there's that momentum. The Virginia Wesleyan are finding their groove here now and another early goal. Right, do I got to start writing these down? How many, how many kickoff goals is Virginia Wesleyan going to get in this series to take the over under on this one? Is at the moment, they're pretty much at three. Within, yeah. you know, 10 seconds of this kickoff as well. They are putting all that pressure off of these. And right, we we're just talking about last game, why it's so Ooh. important. And there's a chance here immediately open net. Blood can't get that one on target. Jalen was a little bit wide on the potential chance. So it would have been an easy counter attack, but of course you couldn't redirect that one back towards the net. Great challenge there from Knight. Maybe as a second touch here, just barely missing that to try and get that one back on net. Demo comes through on the Knight as he makes his way back on defense. But that is just a pass oh, a right back that's to Nada Duck. Oh, uh, Nada Duck has been on fire. Both of those defenses, Nada Duck is able to just thread the needle with some beautiful passing and find the exact spot to get to the teammate to get through all three of the orange players. Does it a second time, and that second time it converts into yet another goal. And uh, this one, a 2-0 lead. That two-goal lead coming much earlier for Virginia and Wesleyan here in game two. And now we'll see the pressure on Milligan with only a minute of time to gone through so far. We see the pressure now. It has to come out from Millican Universities. They need to find a way back into this game. They'll try and stop the kickoff goals at the very least, but at this point, can they stop three from going in? Doesn't look like it is Virginia West laying with only about a minute collapsed in time, are able to have a three to zero lead in game number two after what was a pretty competitive game one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not really competitive anymore. Well, it's you know, plenty of time. Like, I don't want to count Milligan right, University right. out. That's not what I mean. But this opening minute has been extremely convincing. You know, very, very dominant play. Uh, it looks like Milligan University maybe getting a little a little flustered here. Maybe just need to take a breath, calm down, get back to some fundamentals. And, that well, you know, don't, don't, <laughs> don't score own goals. That would, that would also be a helpful, a helpful tip for any Rocket League player. Yeah, I think Jitra, I don't think it was intentional with the way they're trying no, to rotate no. back, unfortunately. Yeah. But that is a fourth goal. So it just keeps postponing that chance of trying to get back into this game. And right now it is not looking great. Obviously for team morale, own goals don't feel that good either. Unless you're Space Station Gaming, that's a completely different way to handle <laughs> own goals. But in this case, it seems that... Well, have to see a huge comeback from Milligan. They need five to win, at least four to go into overtime. And right now, only one shot on the board in total. It's going to be rather hard to do that when you don't have the pressure on offense, as you did maybe in last game. But there's a chance. Not a duck. Ooh. can play on both sides of the ball. Well, and I love what we're seeing out of Virginia Wesleyan is they've really kind of bring out some of this identity that we were talking about before the series. They are very aggressive. And they are starting to lean into that more and more. And yes, the, the vulnerability to that is going to be overcommitting. It is going to be making sure you can get back on defense on time, saving the resources to get back uh, and, and go against the counter, uh, which is what Bayless was able to find an opening there with. But still, the four goal to one lead is coming on the back of a lot of suffocating aggression. A chance off kickoff oh. here. Knight able to flip it over the head and find another good goal. Two back to back. That's what you never count on a squad. Yeah, and that's just a straight dead kickoff leading to Knight having good positioning. This is why a lot of people like to cheat on kickoffs, try and get close to that to that ball to see if the ball goes dead like that in midfield. Because then you have a very easy chance to get that shot on goal. It's almost a similar kickoff comes through, but this one goes straight back to Jalen on the other side of the field. Still maybe on the second touch with that one, but Knight, we already talked about the very end of la last game, putting out a little bit of dribble moves. Maybe that player to watch here for MU so far has been creating a lot of the chaos, I would say, against Virginia West laying through two games. All right, Knight definitely seems to have woken up not just himself, but the rest of the squad themselves. I don't have pronouns here. Ooh. I don't want to assume anything, but there we go. 
Knight coming alive in the back half. Well, I mean, barely even approaching the halftime mark of game number two. That's three unanswered. Yeah, we're talking about, uh, you know, there's it's a 4-0. That's, that's stuff to come back from. But there was four minutes left in this game. So there is a plenty of time. And obviously with two minutes and 30 seconds, this is even more realistic now at this point. Another kickoff chance. It's own gold by Jitra again, I think, as uh, just went straight into the back of the net. Unless Jalen did get a touch on that before Jitra. Oh, no. Okay. Jalen hit it straight into Jitra. So that, uh, that's yeah. Jitra being an unfortunate spot two times in a row now, I think. The, I mean, just, just a touch behind the play. Uh, you know, Jitra just getting there a bit late, and unfortunately it, it loses that position where the ball is able to bounce off of them and, and deflect into the net. Uh, certainly, you know, certainly not intentional and indeed the, the right play to go up for Jalen. Uh, but was just a touch behind Jalen beating him to it in that, in that all important angle. Here's Jalen again going on the attack. Defense slowed down a little bit, but not a duck getting aggressive once again. Float over the top. Jet Ross able to come away with it. Loses the challenge in the corner. Not a duck. Look at this. The tenacity. Driving right back in front of the goal. Creating opportunities. Knight is able to thwart it. But, oh, that was a close one. Now I'm going to look at yeah. the university. Try to strike back here, Pip. Not a duck. has just been, uh, I feel like, unstoppable on really both sides of the ball. Just constantly challenging. I definitely play in the similar role. You know, in the, the last series that we saw... The, the Yakub was doing just a very similar role of just being on, being everywhere on the field. And there is an example once again gets a great challenge in the back of their net as this could have been a goal for Knight and just leads it straight the other way for their third goal of the game on three shots, two assists and a save on top of that for Nada Duck. An incredible performance so far in this game after having a huge lead, throwing it back a little bit, and now being up three goals again. Yeah, I kind of jinxed Knight there, and Knight got absolutely dunked on by Nada Duck into, yeah. into an open net. Uh, so, Knight, you can blame me for that one. Apologies, apologies. Oh, what a pass. Uh, oh, my goodness. What a pass indeed. What a follow-up. That was a laser coming out of Nada Duck. They're fourth of this game. That is just a beautiful passing play, and that's to be expected. Those are some of the easier goals you can get in, you know, other, I, I would say higher tier Rocket League, more competitive Rocket League is being able to find a passing space to your teammate because obviously it's very difficult to read that sometimes as a defender if you're two v one especially to try you're trying to defend the main player with the ball and maybe commit or pre jump to try and stop that one and just a, a simple pass gets you an extra goal and now we see a four goal lead once again for the second time this game out of Westland uh, Virginia Westland University as they look to try and clear game to maybe make this a three zero series in their in their cases. We were just talking about the teams need to find their identity right now. Virginia Westland looking very, very strong as a unit. And like you'd mentioned, a, a bit more aggressive as a team in general, trying to get demos to go and work for them as well. Yeah, and just aggressive positioning, aggressive rotations, really tight rotations, particularly right. offensively. Uh, and, I mean, but they, they do leave themselves open to opportunities here. Knight trying to make some magic work. Jalen with a great rage, just speeds across the backboard. Knight with the steal. No way, Knight putting up some moves once again. Uh, just single-handedly works it past all three defenders. Okay, Bayless with a good touch. All right, not quite yeah. single-handed. It was a good touch from Bayless there. All right, all right. I can't count can't, can't Bayless out of that one either. Yeah, just a great challenge in midfield to drop that yeah. one straight back to Knight. And we've been talking about this. We'll continue to talk about this repetitively as challenges at midfield, especially or just in general. Even if you have zero boosts, are so important to keep yourself and keep your team in the game and also with a chance on net as we see another chance on net for Knight who scores their fourth goal of this game and suddenly the lead is being slowly chipped at <laughs> once again. It was 4-0, then went 4-3, now then it was 7-3, now it's 7-5. And there's only five seconds, which could be the defining factor in this one, but props to MU, never giving up. Big props to MU. I, I love the perseverance. Uh, I, mean, I love this game. Like, what what has this game been? This has been absolute nuts. So only goals in bunches. Uh, <laughs> they, they, there was a, a buy two get one on goals apparently, and both of our teams cashed in. They cashed in quite a lot. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is an <laughs> unlimited offer. You say, yeah, I'll, I will, I will cash this in. Yes, please. Uh, I'll do it again. Actually, and, and another one. And
And then uh, Jet Rob was like, wait, I want to cash one in, but for the other team this time. <laughs> we saw a, yeah. couple of, a couple of goals for Jet Raw. It just like we mentioned, unfortunate spot to be in a couple of those times, but a seven to five game two out of these two offenses, I should say, with the exact same amount of shots, nine shots for both teams, mm-hmm. decent amount of saves as well, but just a lot of action in general through, throughout that entirety. Uh, especially, first minute, we had four goals, then it wavered a little bit. We're like, okay, it might just be a Virginia West Lane game, and then immediately three straight back from uh, MU, and we're like, okay, I don't know what's happening anymore. Let's just stop predicting what's going to happen this game, and finishing 7-5 is probably not in my prediction range of the game number two. <laughs> I did not have that one on the bingo card either. You were not alone. Uh, I mean, props to Knight and the rest of the squad for, for, for never giving up on it. I mean, huge. Uh, that's that's what you like to see, uh, keeping your heads in the game and, and proving that they have what it takes. Like they're they are starting to find some weaknesses uh, to this strategy, to this identity of Virginia Wesleyan, uh, and and capitalize on openings, on overcommits, and really punish the overaggression when they get too deep into the orange half. But the defense has to be able to to stave off that aggression more times than uh, you can get the counterattack to work. And I mean, five goals is. Is significant. You're, you're punishing a lot of aggression. Uh, unfortunately, you got the better of you as well a lot. So we'll see if Milliken can bring it back. They have the right idea. Can they execute here in game three? That is the important thing you mentioned is while they're an extremely aggressive team, that there is a lot of ways to counter the aggressive teams. If you play a solid defense, play that counterattacking style. Those aggressive teams triple commit on offense and suddenly they're wide open for a shot on the other side of the field. So that is something that we want to see out of Milligan University, I'd say, throughout the rest of this series, as they are down 2-0 now in this best of five. They need to find a way to win this game and try and keep them in the series. You see a good amount of pressure so far this time. Not looking like game two a minute in. It is scoreless. Nil-nil so far through game three. But I still feel that Milligan has a good chance to come back in this series just if they can get these chances, this pressure, while... The aggressiveness is going on the other side of the field, but that is just an insane oh, shot from Jay. Oh, nice one-two. Oh, with a nice pass from Not a Duck as well. The touch there, that pass as Jaylen goes up the wall to grab it, which just angles it perfectly. Yeah, that is that is a tough shot to even save. You're not really expecting a shot from that angle, so great shot from Jaylen gets the goal. Go ahead, lead once again for Virginia West Lane in game three, and now we'll see if you can Continue to march on that progress and not a duck with a wide open net misses just wide. So they don't get that second goal in their favor. But Jalen's gonna try and drop down with that one. Good amount of bumping and aggression going on still from Virginia West Lane as Blood makes that rotation back, gets a nice challenge at midfield, and Bayless had to miss off the wall. But pressure still heavily in favor for Virginia West Lane so far, and that is a shot again. Just going wide, but this is a chance. Those are these are the kind of options. Or opportunities you see how much space was there on the counterattack that's what mu needs to start finding yeah knight didn't quite have the boost to to start off with a lot of speed had to just kind of hoof it downfield knight with a big save there that's an important one to not let virginia wesleyan get this 2-0 right now it feels like the momentum is just gonna be against you and the ball's just sitting there blood will indeed find that added padding of insurance and put Virginia Wesley up by two as we approach the halfway mark. Oh, the defense just, well, just quite literally dropped the ball there, Pip. They just dropped yeah. the ball. Yeah, it's a double commit and neither player hit the ball. That's uh, the worst situation that can happen with a double commit. Best situation, you both hit the ball and you both uh, shoot it towards the net. The worst situation when you both miss and they're kind of just sitting there floating in the back of the net. This time, Bayless is able to recover a defensive shot. Jit Roth missing there but leaving the ball still for Knight to have a chance right now it seems to be Knight on the offense solely alone Bayless was there for a little bit of assistance and a great shot but gets bumped by his teammate and now the ball gets hit downfield for a counter attack just a, it seems like in general Milligan is having some communication issues I, I I think you know obviously it's all at face value but there's definitely some some double commits happening some team bumps we just saw that ends up leading to this goal entirely so Definitely some, maybe some problems for Milligan this time around. It definitely things, I mean, you know, sometimes uh, if games aren't going your way, it's easy to clam up and you stop communicating. Right. Uh, Knight, I mean, 
There we go. I'm getting some deja vu here. But I'm just, gonna <laughs> just, just I've seen Game this story not over. before. I'm gonna reiterate to everybody. <laughs> Game is not over. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's the kind of thing to get your team common right there. Like, get that energy back. That's the kind of goal that can hype them up. They got two minutes and 14 seconds to make something happen. Yeah, still plenty of time, like you mentioned, just about halfway through this game for Milligan University to find a way back into it. And with Knight playing like they've been playing so far through these two games, I think there's an easy chance if Knight can make one of those solo plays happen. But the, the worst part in Rocket League is if you have to start depending on those solo plays. That's a great passing play, but Jalen just goes bit wide and an extra hit there from not a duck I think it was on the top just couldn't get that on target but these chances are coming in plentiful great fake from Jalen almost Ooh. gets it past the third defender too oh, 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 oh. would have been an insane goal for Jalen oh yeah blood keeps speeding by just narrowly missed it as well was trying to help out right, I love the style I love the style out of this Marlin squad no, I'm not going up. I'm going to get the contact out. And push pass over Jalen right back into the middle. Knight keeps that from being a dangerous deflection off the backboard. Able to find Bayless midfield. Really could, could use some good assault here. Some good time in front of the blue oh, net, no. but not being allowed anything. Suddenly it's a 3v1 going the other direction. Jiro with no boost is able to steal that one away. Could have been a very dangerous spot. Instead, it's Knight charging in, hoping to make something happen for Milligan University. Oh, and a good fake from Blood. It gets winded to bite. Can't get Knight to patience. bite, though. I do, too. It is, it's quite impressive. And they feel like all of them on Virginia West Lane have been very patient throughout this series so far. See a good potential passing play being set up as Knight hits this one towards the backboard. Not the greatest chance or hit down for Jalen, I should say. But Bayless gets demoed off that one. Blood still in backboard, able to find a recovery. And not a duck with plenty of boost. Should still be able to clear this one out of their side of the field. And with 30 seconds ticken down now. Milligan has to find something quick or they are just out of the series. Third game could be done and dusted here for Virginia West Lane with 15 seconds now. Yeah, patiently aggressive. Aggressive positioning, but patient execution. Virginia West Lane looking solid. Uh, it looks like they're going to be the squad to move up to 500. This will be a clean 3-0. Uh, not without some excitement, not without some good back and forth, but in the end of the day, Virginia Wesleyan moving up to three in three overall here in the spring 22 season. Nice performance out of them. A lot. I, we were talking about identity and how important it is. I think the Marlins gave us that in spades. Virginia Wesleyan are aggressive, and their regression has been rewarded with this 3-0 sweep. Yeah, I think so too. And obviously, you can see just in the shot totals and everything, it, it just felt like MU was not really in that match this time around. We talked about a couple of the, the problems we saw in that game with communication or just some, some missed opportunities, double commits as well. And that happens. Of course, that's just going to happen in every game now right. and then. But, you know, it's still it was a competitive series. And that's why I don't like when three O's happen. Or, you know, that it looks like it's a sweep. It's like, oh, that team didn't have any chance because it still looked like Milligan had some good chances and especially games one and two to come back into those games. And it, it a 3-0 storyline I feel like doesn't show exactly what happened in this series but it is still a huge props over to Virginia West Lane because they looked very very good uh looked incredible overall and lead themselves to that net neutral record of three and three uh, uh being able to go back to that that positive record like we had been talking about trying to push back for that and clearly have a have a good identity like you said going forward so they they want to keep pushing that and see if they if they can continue with that and there's some some signs of life out of Milligan University, some things that they can take back and, and take this experience, take this match and review, and definitely some things to learn. Uh, and, and there's a lot of potential to keep improving. I mean, that's, I think, the most important part is is growing uh, and continuing to get better every day and every game. I think that's what matters most. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's that identity. It seemed like Virginia and Wesleyan were a little bit further along in that process, at least from this match we saw today. Uh, and I'm, I'm very anxious to get to talk with them and, uh, you know, get, get the, well, the words out of the duck's mouth as we are going to get not a duck in here. Momentarily, we're trying to get that interview set up. But uh, uh, in the interim, uh, I will say, I mean, that's. There's still time. There's still time for Virginia Wesleyan to put this together into a late run in the season and try to muscle their way up into that top three slot, which would you know guarantee him a shot in the in the post. Yeah, and there's a lot of the play problems that can be solved. I, I feel like very easily, yeah. at least at this point in time, you know, it's just a, a maybe a lack of communication. Maybe there's too much communication. These are issues that you can just 
crack down on and be like, all right, let's focus on this. And that's what scrims are really helpful for and just trying to figure out a lot of teams don't, they just like to practice everything all at once. I think it's really important to, to hone down on something for a specific period of time and try to crack down on that and see if that helps your team in general. But we finally do have that interview ready with Not A Duck. So we'll go ahead and bring them on in an incredible series 3-0. Not A Duck, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Um, just ecstatic with the win in general. As well you should be. Well played. Well played. Uh, you were able to put two together in a row, kind of had a rough start to the season. Now you've got two back-to-back three O's. What has changed? What has been the difference maker these past couple weeks? Um, definitely just focusing on defensive plays a lot. I know in the second game it wasn't the greatest for us with that, but um, we've been focusing, practicing that defensive rotation and just getting back into it. Yeah, and you guys well, had it's, uh, a very oh go no go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. As you had a very uh, like you said uh, a back and forth game too leading into the series obviously a bit uh, of an outlier but do you feel like as a team you you had that that good performance over uh, MU today you just felt like you meshed a bit more we talked about uh, the problems that MU might have had in that game a lot of double commits and maybe some miscommunications at times do you do you feel like as you know the season's progressed you guys are getting better do you feel like these kind of things are are heavily improving? Yeah, I mean, as the season goes on, like, of course, we have our rough beginnings, of course, as any season, but um, just looking for those plays, like, it's all about communication, really, um, being able to talk with your teammates, letting them know where you are just to get those classes together and make it work out. So that was the big change, I think, for us from game one to game three tonight. Now, uh, I got to ask, we were, we were kind of speculating on broadcast and talking about the importance of a team's identity and saying that you all seem to play very aggressive and you know, which aggressive rotations and really trying to to keep pressure on the net a lot of the times. Is this a is this a conscious decision? Is this something you're actively trying to do or is this just kind of how your players play naturally and you just kind of fell into that kind of a look, that kind of a style? Yeah, so the. Yeah, so this came together this past fall when we first all started playing together. Um, and we just realized we're all just three very aggressive attacking players. So we just <laughs> ran with it and just saw what would happen, um, which I think has worked out for us in most cases. But definitely then get, getting caught out on the defense is definitely something to watch out for as well. Well, hey, it sounds like you're focusing on that and trying to try to show that up so i uh, wish you the best of luck uh, throughout the rest of the season any any shout outs or or final thoughts here before we let you get out of here Dada Duck? um i would just like to shout out virginia wesleyan university and my team for the awesome performance tonight awesome awesome love man well congrats once again thank you for for joining us for this interview yeah thank you so much all right there you have it not a duck from virginia wesleyan university uh, I, I love getting that insight. I love getting that insight where it's they just found themselves that, like naturally we're all very aggressive, and so it's like okay, okay, let's lean into that, but we can't forget about our defense. Like that's uh, yeah, wise it, words. It, it's smart that you know he pointed out himself. He he knows that once you have three aggressive players, that counterattack is there, like at every yeah. single point of the game, and that's something that the really really good teams will start to crack down and be like, we can still play really aggressive, but we can have that rotational player that can still be able to get back in time. For those counterattacks and that's something that we'll probably see improve on the future as, as i said you know rough start as always but being able to slowly progress on that and of course like he had mentioned finding that identity finding that all three players are aggressive and like to to play up front that's going to be the case for them but you know that ends that series a, an incredible 3-0 performance 